last day of filming, we've come to Suffolk County Council to have a look around. We spent about three hours at Suffolk County Council headquarters in the centre of Ipswich. We had a brief look around but spent most of the time in a meeting room where the interviews were to take place. Several employees from Suffolk County Council came to meet us and told us their route on into employment and about how they ended up working at Suffolk County Council. Hello, I'm Oliver Lockwood. I'm an apprentice in business development and I started off my education in Holbrook High School. Do you feel there could be better communication between schools and businesses? Should more visits of this kind be organised to give insight to students? Definitely. I mean, it's key to get a, certainly a decent experience in what businesses do and to give pupils an idea of where to aim for, what they need to do at school and where they can actually go to. Hi, I'm uh, Councillor Graham Newman. I'm the Cabinet Member for Education and Young People. I'm obviously a County Councillor. I represent the Division of Felixstowe. Do you think more visits to businesses could help students? I was just saying to, to your mentor today, I think that's absolutely what we need to do and you know, certainly if I'm doing this role um, uh, in the next administration, I mean I'd like to have a group in here every Friday, and perhaps a larger group actually, um, because there's just so much stuff going on in this authority and also it shows you how local democracy works. Do you think that more careers advice should be given to students to give them a better understanding of what jobs are to offer? I think it's, it's a mixture probably of careers advice, but also exposure, I think. Do you feel younger people have the right skills, knowledge and preparation to go into the workplace? Um, I think there's a lack of um, developing the skills within education. The main point is CVs, they need to be developed, there needs to be um, work towards helping students develop a decent CV so that um, employers can see it and go, yes, I want that person. You've also got the point that when I came into the workplace, I didn't know anything about tax, how that would work. And I think generally skills around, it, uh, sorry, skills around employment do need to be developed a little bit more and explained to pupils before they actually have to use them. Do you think enough careers advice is given to young people to go into the wide world? Um, I think there's too much focus in certain areas towards pushing people towards university. There needs to be more advice about how to get into the workplace straight from school or straight from sixth form and also improve um, advice around apprenticeships and vocational qualifications as well. When you yourself were in education did you know what you wanted to do and did you feel prepared to leave? <laughs> well it's quite interesting that because uh, we did have somebody who used to come from the County Council's Careers Advice Service uh, I can, although I'm, uh, I was 65 last week, uh, I can remember this as clear as a bell, as Mrs Goodyear was her name. And she said to me, I ought to go into sales. I'm like, I don't want to be a salesperson. Um, I had some interest in different subjects, but I wasn't exactly sure how they would fit into the workplace. So I went off and did A-levels. And then from there, I didn't really know what I wanted to do or how I could do it. Um, and this has provided me with a good opportunity to actually learn a little bit about local government, a little bit about different areas of business and certainly helped me out. As we've seen, Suffolk is one of the lowest counties in the Suffolk League table for GCSE results. Why do you think this is? Well, I think there's a, yeah, you're getting into a political area here. I mean, there's, there's a number of reasons, I think. I think um, I've been a bit, maybe we've all been a little bit complacent, you know. We've lost track of where we're going. People sometimes say, why is it that um, you, know, you live in an inner London borough doing better than we are? Well. You know, if you open your back door anywhere sort of in London, you can probably see the Shard, you can probably see, um, you know, the sort of golden pavements of the City of London, you can see the Houses of Parliament, you feel very much part of, of life as you see it day after day in news bulletins. You know, let's be fair, you don't often see a picture of Holbrook in a news bulletin, do you? You know, and I think we're, we're a bit like that. We're, we're, um, we're not quite up to speed with those sorts of things. And this is not just... Um, people at school or teachers. It's all of us. It's parents as well. As a student taking exams, did you get stressed and how did you cope with them stresses? Um, I was one of the fortunate people not to get stressed at all, although I think it probably hindered my um, grades a little bit because I didn't revise enough. But for those people that are stressing about exams, the best thing is revise as much as you feel you need to. And so that when you go into the exam, you feel confident that you know everything you can. And then just do whatever you can once you're in the exam. What do you think in the change in the exam system? Uh, one exam at the end isn't necessarily the best option in my opinion um, because there's certain different there's areas within subjects and they cover different sort of topics 
and if you can go into an exam and you know what topic's going to be there, you can actually revise better for it. And that would certainly help improve attainment if you were doing specific exam for specific topics within subjects. What are your opinions on the proposed exam changes and on Michael Gove's latest move? <laughs> well, I don't quite know um, uh, where, uh, why he's taken the decision to um, U-turn. I mean, U-turns in politics are, are not usually favoured. We, we try not to do too many U-turns. Um, maybe he's done yeah, what I quite often have to do. I think of an idea, but I have to run it past professionals. And maybe he's had lots of professional people come to him and say, this is too quick, too soon, I don't know. Um, maybe there's a concern that it doesn't acknowledge the fact that you know, not everyone's going to be Archimedes in this world and inventing and designing new stuff. But there's lots of stuff in between. How do you get a new building? You know, you have, we have to have bricklayers. Um, you can't actually do bricklaying very well unless you understand maths and things like that and symmetry and all those sorts of things and a good mix of cement. We've I mean, seen plenty of buildings fall down because they've had a bad mix of cement. So every trade, every vocation, has got some science behind it. We have to make sure that everybody is, is the best they can be. That might not necessarily be you know, all passing um, GCSE um, with an A star in maths. It might well be in, in vocational stuff, but whatever it is, we don't need to be taking a vocation as a second choice. We want to say, let's do that thing and let's make sure you're the best at it. That's what I think, anyway. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.